Uh, hello, everybody. My name is Peter, and uh, I just want to give a quick introduction to PDB, the Python debugger. So often I see and at like beginner level, advanced level uh, people using print debugging uh, or print statements to introspect their code. Um, you know, you can print out variables, call functions, get the results, et cetera. Uh, there are a couple negatives to this. Um, there, it's limited. You can't really interrupt the execution. Uh, it's messy. You have to remember to clean up every single print statement that you added. Uh, zero interactivity. So. Uh, if you want to modify what you're printing, um, you have to rerun the whole uh, code all over again. And it's actually, interesting, interestingly enough, much harder to dive deeper into code, be it your coworkers' code or party, uh, third party libraries that you're uh, leveraging in your project. So in comes the debugger. Uh, basically, it's a program that helps you find uh, and correct errors in your program. Uh, these exist in many languages and platforms. Um, and Python's built-in one is PDB. So to use a debugger, uh, three easy steps to follow. Set a breakpoint, run the program, and then the execution will halt uh, where you set that breakpoint. And now you get to interact with uh, the debugger. So to really get started, you just add this one line um, to your code in Python. And uh, we like to keep it one line because then it's just that much easier to clean up when you're done. Um, I wrote this uh, super simple API. Uh, you know, you just use requests uh, to fetch some data and then respond with some JSON. Uh, but you'll also notice I added that uh, set trace statement there so we can start using the debugger. You run the program, uh, hit the API, and uh, it drops you into this uh, PDB shell. Um, and uh, you can do a lot of stuff here. So you can run the L command, uh, which is the list command, and it basically points you to where the code has stopped execution and paused right there. Uh, you notice that it's right after the breakpoint that we added earlier, um, which means the request hasn't happened yet, uh, but if we, um, well, first we can actually write a couple expressions. We can look at the local variables we have, globals. Uh, we notice that there is the request variable here, which is what Flask exposes for the API. We can kind of take a look at the object, maybe look at an attribute. Um, but when we're done, at this particular point in time, we can use the n or next command. And what that does is, line by line, takes you through your code. Um, so we can see if we run the next command as we were paused right before response, then it runs, and then we can uh, inspect what response is at the end. But what if we want to go a little deeper into, let's say, what request.py is doing when you call get. Well, you can use the step command, which steps into the execution of the function you're about to call. And for example, here we're inside the get command, uh, and we can take a look at like what URL was exactly passed into it. Uh, we've wrapped up kind of inspecting what's going on, so we can run the C or continue command. Uh, and you can see here that once we did that, the request responded back to the browser. So the general flow, uh, use L uh, list to orient yourself and kind of look at what code is before and after uh, where it's paused. Uh, use N or step over uh, to go line by line. And then S or step in to dive deeper. Uh, and, and anywhere along this process, you can create expressions and uh, kind of gain insights in into what's happening and C to continue to the next breakpoint or finish. Um, also, quick notes, definitely more commands features available. There is IPDB, the IPython version. And uh, by all means, it's in other languages as well. So like JavaScript has one in the browser, or C has GDB. And uh, I'm from Tesorio, and we're hiring.